Alrighty, so today we're going to do a first free run for my new mink. And I've got him in the live trap. We brought him to an area that uh, we're going to be able to use. And uh, let me show you here why I picked the area I did. If you look, this area is open. This is actually where I go to church. Um, I've already pre-scouted this area. I've used it lots of times. So I know there's no little holes or drainages. You want to make sure there's no random drainage pipes or something the mink could disappear down in. There's nowhere really for it to go. But it's not totally open. You notice there's a building. Mink, when they're scared and running, they want to be close to something they can hide to. So they can run along this building and feel kind of secure. If you're just out in the middle of a the field, they're just going to sprint like crazy to the next hiding spot. And um, there's little bushes and stuff around the other side. So if the mink really gets desperate to hide, he can feel secure along this building, but he can't really disappear and get away from you. Also, I brought a little live trap. That's what he's in right now. So if I need to catch him, I could set that. And I've got a net, or two nets actually. Um, so that if we have to, we can catch him with the net. I don't think we'll need any of this, but it's always good to be safe rather than sorry. And uh, I'm not gonna use the, the harness anymore because he's been figuring it out. And uh, it's kind of hard to get him harnessed. I could get him harnessed. I could train him and blah, 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 and spend all this time, but I figure it's easier just, he's doing so good, let's just turn him loose and, and me quit messing with the harness, uh, at least on a daily basis. All righty, let's, uh, let's let him out here. I'm gonna try and uh, let him out without getting him, letting him attach himself to my glove. I'm trying to break that habit, like I explained in the other video. So I'm gonna see if I can open this door without him grabbing me. Come on out, so bad. Come on out. Come on out. Okay, when he's near the cage, he's all hyped up and wants to grab me. So I, I opened it with that little thing so that he wouldn't uh, have my glove right there to grab. And I gave him a piece of meat so his mind's on food. So he, he came up to me like he didn't want to fight at all. So I, I, I think he was thinking food the way he, his body language said so. So he looks like he's ready to work. Look at this. So I'm gonna give him a food, few food calls here, and uh, he's anxious to eat. Um, let's see if I can get him distracted for a sec. He just wants to come and eat right now, huh? And you see why? I, took the, lure, the leash off, or didn't bother the harness today, he's, he's pretty solid. If he gets very far from me, he, I don't think he responds too good to the food call, but... Blingo, help! to me calling him when I'm just a couple feet away. It's pretty common for them to get confused and try and go to the other person if there's two people. Especially. <laughs> he cut on. Blingo ho! Go, 
Bingo Hub. There we go, he's figuring it out. Blinga hop, blinga hop, blinga hop, blinga hop, blinga hop, good boy, blinga hop, good boy, yeah, good boy. These are his first long calls, so it's pretty typical for him to be confused the first couple times, but he actually picked it up after his first confusion. He's he's doing really good. Oh, and I took too long getting away from him. He's already coming. <laughs> hey. hey, little boy. Blinga hop. Blinga hop. I think I'll think, stick a little tidbit up in there. Hey, <laughs> be nice. Good boy. Good boy, you ate up in my gloves. Good boy. I haven't really tried to get him to do that much. Of course, he's not scared of being up in my gloves. He's always jumping up to me to bite. Huh. Huh. Here, check out that. Look at that. What's this? Hey, stop. Stop. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Hmm? He's like, you're not getting out of my side. I know you have the meat. Should I put it while you're not busy with him? Flinga ho. Good boy. Stay up here, Nate. Stay up here and eat. Good boy. No, stay up here and eat. You, no, no, stay up here. Stay up here. Stay up here and eat it. Stay up here and eat it. I haven't really worked with him getting him to eat on my gloves just because he's not scared of being in my gloves at all. Most mink are, and so I do a lot of work getting him to stay in the gloves while they eat. It's not really been necessary for him because he doesn't really, he's not intimidated by me at all. Stay here and eat, buddy. He's like, oh, I want to take it somewhere. There you go. Oh, he started to. Stay here and eat. You don't need to go anywhere. How come you need to go somewhere to eat it? Just chew it. Chew it up and swallow. Just chew it up and swallow. You could do it. Yeah, you could do it. Silly boy. There you go. He's still, he's, he's wiggling. He's still. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. He's mad. Good boy. He saw his... Yeah, that's a good job. Blingo ho!
This is usually the safest time to touch a mink for the first time barehanded is while they're eating. Sounds kind of silly because they're, you know, they're eating. That should be the dangerous time, but so far, in my experience, it's been the safest time because they're preoccupied with eating. I still don't totally trust him, obviously. 